Hello everyone. Welcome to experiment number two. In this experiment, we are going to learn how to batch multiple LLM requests to achieve optimal performance using LangChain module. The major drawback in the first experiment is the sequential execution. In today's video, we are going to change the code and batch the request together and make it run faster. If you had already watched my previous video, following the notebook and implementing batching is fairly straightforward process. If not, is the first link in the description. Let's get started. Let's quickly run through the initial steps of loading the data set, initializing the LLM and initializing the prompt. Here are the imports. I have already loaded the data set. So we have 10,000 articles. Let's initialize the opening key. Initialize the LLM, initialize the prompt and bind the prompt and the LLM together as a single chain. Before we go ahead and make the changes to support batching, the first step is to validate whether the model that we are using supports batching using the LangChain's batch module. To identify, go to the LangChain's documentation and there is a separate page where we have different LangChain methods. In our case, in the experiment one, we used invoke. Now we are going to use bash. Just look for your model. In our case, we are using OpenAI model. So I'm just going to check whether OpenAI supports batching, but at the same time, not all the models supports batching. Now let's go back to the sample inference section and write our code. To understand it better, let's take first three articles and see how invoke and batching works. In case of LLM.invoke, the article's classification is done sequentially. For instance, article number one will be passed as a user prompt. And once we receive the response back from LLM, the article number two is passed. And once we get the response two, we pass article number three and we get the response three. But in case of LLM.batch, all these three articles are passed at once and the articles are processed concurrently, which in turn speeds up the execution. But there is a catch. If we are using LLM.batch, there is no guarantee that the results that are written from the LLM are in the same order. For instance, in this diagram, we can see we are passing three requests, article one, article two, article three. But the result that we are getting is the categories of article 3, article 1 and article 2. And it is our duty to map this result back to the original article. Otherwise, the things will get incorrectly mapped. Now we will implement batching. Let's take first three articles. Say we want to perform chain.invoke for the first three articles for index in range of three, I'm just performing chain.invoke and let me change this to index and let's put the response. Now we can see each and every article is processed sequentially and it took 2.5 seconds to complete the execution. And now to perform batching for these articles, all we have to do is to use chain.batch. The chain.batch takes in list input and hence we have to create a list say batches we have to append all the items inside this list for index in range of three now i'll append the articles into this list Let's print the rest. Instead of sending each and every article sequentially, we are going to send all three articles at once using chain.batch. Now chain.batch of batches. Let's run this. Now we can see we have received the response and these three articles are processed concurrently and there is a significant difference in the timings. Previously, it took 2.5 seconds. 
now it took 1.177 since we are running only three articles the time difference is less once we implement this for 100 articles or even 1000 articles we can significantly see the difference between the sequential process and the batch process before we go ahead and change the inference section we have to cover one more important item of mapping the results back to the original articles in this case we perform batching with three requests and there is no guarantee that we will have the result in the same order in which we sent the original articles and hence to map this results back to the original article there are multiple ways one way is to batch using the index but today we are going to take a slightly different approach let's move to the prompt section in the prompt we have a system prompt which instructs to classify the article and the user prompt we are sending in the actual article content instead of sending only the content i'm going to send in a json which has both the id of the article and content of the article we are going to instruct the llm to classify this article and return not only the category but also the id of the article so let's take Now I have changed this prompt to take in a JSON input. Imagine this input is going to be a JSON wherein we will be passing the ID and the article content and we are instructing the LLM to return ID and the category. Let's run this. Now we have to build the chain again since we made the change in the prompt. Now for the sample inference, there is a change. In the chain that invoke, previously we have been passing only the article content, but now we have to pass in both article content and the ID. First, gather all the IDs. Let's copy this, and this is IDs, and I'm going to take the ID column. Now I have 10,000 IDs. Let's go back here. Now, let's write the content. It's a dictionary with ID as IDs of 0 and the article, which is going to be the articles of 0. Okay. Now, this, this content is a dictionary. Let me run this. Here we can see we have the ID and we have the article, and we can do the JSON the dumps. This now it becomes a JSON string. Okay. What we can do is we can pass in this JSON string to the LLM, and now the LLM's response. Let's save it to response variable and do response dot content. Let's print the content. Here we can see the content which is written has both ID and the category. Okay. Now, if we do the same thing for batching, let's do the same thing for the batching. Let's take this dash dot append. Here, I'm going to make it as an index. I'm going to make it as an index. And let's run this. Now, it doesn't matter in which order the output is written because each and every output is going to have an ID column and the category column, which we can extract from response.content. we can use json.loads of json response.content and we can map these ids and content back together with the sequential execution we can see for the 100 articles it took 1 minute and 14 seconds to complete let's have the same results variable for each article in enumerate of articles Let's also add TQDM 
so that we can see the progress bar. Okay. Now, in case of chain dot invoke, we passed in each and every article in one iteration, but in chain dot batch, we are going to define a batch size. Say so the batch size is eight. We are going to send in the data in batches and we have to perform chain dot invoke only when we have eight inputs. So we'll have a variable inputs and for each article, let's write a JSON. Say this is the JSON and we're going to do inputs dot append of index index. Okay. So for each article, we are appending an entry in inputs list whenever this input list, the length of this input list reaches the batch size, we can process this batch, right? So the response will be chain dot batch of inputs, right? Now we set the batch size at eight and we are appending it eight times when the input, the length of inputs reaches eight, we are going to send all the batch elements, eight articles at once, and we are going to gather the response. In this case, the response, the type of the response variable is a list, right? So as we, here we can see, when we do the batching, it returns all the response at once, and it's already a list. So what we can do is results plus equals response. We are just concatenating the results. Now, once we have successfully processed all the batches, we have to reset the inputs so that we don't process the same record again. And there is one more condition. Now I have 100, I'm going to process only 100 articles and I have set the batch size as 8. And hence, after 96th article, I have to process the remaining four articles. To do that, I'm just going to add one more condition. If there are any remaining items in the inputs, this is going to run response dot response equals chain dot batch and get the response and append it to the results variable. Right? Now let's go ahead and run this code. Now the batch is set as eight and let's see how fast it is. Okay, it's done. And we can see in the sequential execution for processing 100 articles, it took one minute and 14 seconds. Whereas when we set, set the batch size is eight, in the concurrent execution, it took only 13 seconds. Can I increase the batch size to 16 or 32 so that I can run even faster? Answer is no. When we run this, we can notice since we perform batching, for every second, it's processing almost eight requests, right? So for every second, it's processing eight requests. Then for 60 seconds, within a minute, it's processing almost 480 requests. OpenAI comes with a rate limit where we have two important parameters. One is the request per minute. Another is tokens per minute. For the tire one, we cannot pass more than 3,500 requests within a minute. And we should not exceed 60,000 tokens within a minute. Okay. If we calculate within a minute, we are trying to process only 480 transactions, 480 requests, that's okay. But for each request, we are sending number of tokens, right? Imagine length of each article is 500 tokens. Then we are trying to pass in 240K tokens within a minute, which is over the rate limit of 60,000. And hence, if I set the batch size as 8, and try to process 1000 articles, I'll get a rate limit error. It's very important for us to analyze the length of the articles and find out appropriate batch size and process it accordingly. Another easiest way to stay under the radar is inducing a manual delay. Before we perform change or batch, we can add or induce a delay of 1.5 seconds. That means, once it processes eight articles, 
it waits for 1.5 seconds and then takes up the next set. That means within a minute, we are no longer processing 8 plus 60 requests because there is a delay of 1.5 seconds in between. Let's run this code and wait for the results. Okay, we have the results. It took 5 minutes and 13 seconds for processing 1000 articles. If we had processed this sequentially, let's estimate how much time it would have taken. For processing 100 articles, it took 1 minute and 14 seconds, which is 74 seconds for 100 articles, then it would have taken 740 seconds for 1000 articles, just a random estimate which is more than 12 minutes. Now, with the batch is of A, we are able to see, even with the manual induced delay, we are able to process it within 5 minutes and 13 seconds. That means, we have taken only one half of the time. Let's quickly write some post-processing code. We have our results variable. So, we have a list of A messages. Let's first take account of total number of tokens that is used. To do that, I'm going to write a list comprehension. So a um, results of zero dot response metadata of token usage. Now let's go to this x for x in results. So this is going to be the list. Let's make it as a data frame. Okay, now this, this data frame talks about the completion tokens, prompt tokens, this number of input tokens that is sent, and this is the number of output tokens, and this is the total number of tokens consumed. And uh, let's also pass the response. In case of a response, let's have two lists. One is a successful response, and there might be some cases where the results are not as expected, maybe due to JSON formatting or due to incorrect response from LLM, which we want to process it again, right? So for each output in the response, in the results, right? Let me print the output. Okay, so output looks like this. Let's take, so let's take the output content. We just want the content, content is output that content and I want to perform JSON that loads of this content. If I am able to successfully load the content, then I will input this into a success queue. But then if I get a value error, I'll just append the output into the failure queue, right? So let's put this content and this, okay? So for each and every output, if the output is successful, it goes inside success. If it is, uh, if there is any failure, then it goes inside failure, right? Now, what we can do is we can do pd.data frame of success. And there is a spell error. Right? Now, here we can see for us all 100 are successful and hence we got a data frame with 100 plus 2 rows where we have the ID we have the category now we can map this back to our original data set because the original data set we have id and the articles all we have to do is in a join as we see batching is very simple instead of using chain.invoke all we have to do is to use chain.batch and passing the list of prompts and things are done only thing to keep in mind is the batch size we need to make sure that we are processing our requests under the rate limits I hope you enjoyed this content. If so, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.